What's going on guys? Bassin' it up. Moffat here coming at you with a new video for this week. In this week's video, me and my good buddy Tanner head out to the lake and we have an absolute slugfest of a day on a high pressure day. And the fish were really specific this day, so we're going to break that down a little bit for you then and explain to you what was going on, how we caught these fish and everything down at the end. Also along the way a little bit as well. But stay tuned y'all, cause this one's gonna be a great one. Here we go. Hey kid, don't ever let them get inside your head. They'll tell you what to do in life instead. Of everything you know that you can get. Don't let them guide your life towards regret. I'll fight for what I love with every breath. My past is filled with things I won't forget. I use them all to push me to my best. So treat the worst of times just like a test. I start out throwing a crankbait around, just ripping it around through the grass and over the tops of it. A little Strike King okay. 1.0. And then Tanner is throwing the half ounce jackhammer chatterbait. Oh. It's a ritual, ritual guy. Little itty bitty guy, that's not what we're looking for though. He's up with this camera. We started out fishing pretty shallow because a lot of my fish that I've been catching lately have been pretty shallow in around eight foot or less. So we started doing that. Big, but it felt a little bit bigger than the other one. Got the one. Yep. Oh, there we go. Tanner got a decent one. That's a solid one. Off the white with the gold. Of course, you'd catch one on a jackhammer. You throw everything I'm thinking, well, I mean, not really everything I'm thinking out of the bag, but change everything a little bit. Crankbait's real similar to a chatterbait. Yeah, that one I felt it bump the grass, and as soon as it come out of the grass, that's when it hit. There's one. one. There's one. <laughs> Another tiny guy. <laughs> Dude, it's funny to be seeing the hit real guys mess with <laughs> Well, that's the size bait that they'd eat. Yeah. <laughs> that's perfect size for them to munch on, but. We get the new coat. <laughs> Where's the freaking giant fat ones like the other night? Yeah. Well, he had that whole back trouble in his mouth. There we go, another little dink. Dude, I really I'm just tearing up the dinks on this little thing. They're coming at me. 
wasn't hitting that. Well, why wouldn't a big one come up and hit this? Oh yeah, I need that for sure. I'm working on it. Start <laughs> right. Thank you. Dude. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, that's not a bad one. Oh heck yeah, that's a good one. That's a four pounder. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> had the nice hook and fish. Had the nice chunk on it, yeah. Yeah, that's not The chunk of fire for. Well, I do have it to scale. Um, just for it to get in Yeah, as well. I say right at four. Yep. It's a little bit over four. Right into the boat. What did you do? She's still up. Oh, there she goes. That was really delayed. She just rode along next to the boat for like so long yeah, doing that. Wow, dude. <laughs> okay, now you gotta make me try on the jackhammer. I thought one was a fluke, now that's two. That's okay, that's a, that's starting to be a deal. That's starting to mean Tana might to be onto something. Tana always onto something. It's because the jackhammer just works. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, when I was standing here, I was looking at this disc fish finder that's closest to me, and I saw like this big hump <laughs> behind the boat, so I figured I'd throw at it. White trash. That's what it is, right? The white trash? Just the regular white, yeah. So now I finally tie on the chatterbait as you saw there and I go back and forth between that and the crankbait for quite a while. I got a de-dink. <laughs> Got my finger. Yeah, big time. Ripped right through it. These little ones are jerks for that. I'm shaking him off with the fire. After that one. That got me good. There's one. There's one. <laughs> Man, these little dinks. Don't. Some 
<laughs> Another dink. Now I'd get him in the side. Oh, you got to hit that. Oh, now. <laughs> He got unhooked and got unhooked on that one then. A dink? No, I got the one. You'd be alright. Yeah, I might need to do that. Here it comes. Yeah, that's a, that's a decent one. Yeah, that's another big one. Probably another three and a half, four, probably. That one's probably three and a half. Yeah, Another chunk. Heck yeah. There he goes. On into jackhammer again. So now I'm starting to realize there's something going on why Tanner keeps getting bites on the chatterbait and I haven't gotten any bites on the chatterbait yet. So I asked him what color he's throwing and what blade it's got. And I was throwing a pretty similar color in his skirt color to what he was throwing, so it should have worked. But he was throwing a gold blade and I was throwing a silver blade. So I was like, huh, well, it's got to be the silver blade then. They must want a gold blade. So I switch up to one with a gold blade and you'll see what happens. That's on the original, dude. On the what? The original chatterbait. Oh, really? Yeah. That's another chunk. That one's off the original chatterbait. Don't see me pick that one up more too much often, but. Right away, first cast with it. They are on a gold blade kick though, that is for sure. Yeah, that for some reason they want a gold blade today. As soon as I switched back from that clear water, I got bites. Now after catching that fish, I had realized that we are pretty much on a pattern now. So I decided to run around the lake with the chatterbait all in different areas that have good millfoil grass and target different pockets and the grass edges with the chatterbait. That's how I put this pattern together on this day. It's always nice having someone else in the boat with you too. It can help you figure out the fish a little bit faster when you're both throwing different baits. It figures out what they're on a little bit easier. Get in it. Ouch. Trying to spy me. Another decent one. There's a decent one there, guys. Another one on the chatterbait. They're whomping on the chatterbait today. Chatterbait fast is on. There we go. Check that nice one out. Let her go. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Not a decent one. I'm gonna side two pounder. That's a chunky fat one. Another chunk. Off the old chatter dunk. Another solid fish there. That's how it would go. There's one. There's one. Oh, that's a big one, Danny. Huh. Huh. I got a free, free and a half. Decent one either way. I thought he was a little bigger than that. There we go guys, there's another fat one, another chunky three pounder. Now I do something pretty important. We fished this spot earlier in the day and didn't really have much luck but those couple dinks. So I was figuring maybe the bigger fish must be on a timer basically. Maybe the bigger fish are up later in the day because all my fish that I was catching in this area were later in the day and later in the evening. So we decided to go back and hit this spot again and sure enough, I was right. I'm probably gonna need it in there. Ah, this might be racked up three years before. I'm gonna try to bait. Yep. Yeah, he'd be a decent one. Here he comes. Yeah, I'd say. That's another four, probably. Yeah, that's definitely a four. Here, hold that out. Okay. 
Okay. Another fatty. Oh, for the chatter donk. Four and a half. Yeah, four six two. Look at that. There she goes. That one was at the, uh, the gold jack with, uh, with the gold and the face. Is that me? Huh? Is that me? Or is that you? Oh, right there. Right I don't know. Would you ever make that noise? Yeah, There's one. There's one. Good one. I thought that was a lot bigger than what it was. I thought that was a lot bigger than what it was. It felt way bigger because he got right down into that grass first. There's another one, guys. There's another one there, guys. Saw one. Put that one back. I think there's something you gotta throw towards this way. For some reason, I've noticed almost all my fish have came off of this middle section right here, oh, yeah. right in there. And I think that's around where yours was too. Yeah. I've been trying to pay attention to that because it's got to be something specific. Other than just this randomness of grass, because they're not sitting just everywhere throughout it. It don't seem like. But for the most part, all my fish have been right around in that area. There's one on the glide bait out in here, but lately, the last couple of weeks, it's all been in there. There's one. He had a chunk of little guy. Yeah. He hit it as I was jigging it out. Another fat little one. He had a dot one. When I tell you they bite here at this time of night, mm -hmm. how stupid is that? And what, we only picked off like one, one or two when we came through. Yeah. Like it wasn't many. No, yeah, it was just two little guys. And now we hit three through here. Well guys, here we are at the portion of this video where I break it down a little for you and show you how we did it. This day, it was a high pressure day, so the fish were going to be feeding. Typically when you get a high pressure day, the fish feed up. It's before a front moves in most of the time. And the fish will start feeding up and eating a little bit better than they do on a normal day. And this day, they were really specific on what they were feeding on. Whether it was because they were feeding on bluegills, or whether it was yellow perch and they liked that gold blade because it kind of mimicked them 
I don't know, but they definitely wanted the gold bladed chatterbait. I knew that because I had thrown multiple kinds of silver bladed chatterbaits and they didn't want anything to do with it. It didn't matter what color, style, or anything. They didn't want anything to do with the silver blade. As soon as I switched up to this Z-Man original chatterbait that I had with the gold blade, didn't have any of my jackhammers with the gold blade. I'd lost them at that time. But as soon as I picked that up, I started catching them. And Tanner had a gold bladed jackhammer on in this color. This is the dirty white Z-Man jackhammer. So that's what told me that they were going to be on the gold blade. They weren't hitting mine. They were hitting his. And all these fish came out of grass. Real specific pockets and areas in the grass. And a lot of times, this is something that you really want to pay attention to when you're out fishing. A lot of times we could throw back to that same exact spot that we caught that fish at and catch another one off of it. So that's something you guys really want to pay attention to when you're out fishing. And it can really help you catch more fish sometimes as well. The rod and reel setup that I was throwing my chatterbaits on is a 7 2 to 1 gear ratio Shimano Scorpion on a 7 3 medium heavy Enigma Phenom titanium series. And then line setup, I have 15 pound line. I always use about 15 pound line on chatterbaits and stuff like that. Any kind of power fishing stuff just gives me a little more leeway to horse the fish in and yank on them and then also gives me confidence in not losing them and snapping. This is Seaguar Invisex fluorocarbon. In my opinion, one of the best fluorocarbons on the market. Most abrasion resistant and I've had this stuff, some pretty hairy, nasty situations, and it saved my butt quite a few times with some really big fish and not made me lose them. So I will always trust this line over any other line. I've had plenty of other lines in those kind of situations break. So always gonna throw Seaguar Invisex fluorocarbon. It's a little more expensive, but it's worth it to not be losing fish, especially when they count in tournaments and stuff like that. But that was what we were using. Didn't seem like color mattered as much as long as you had that gold blade because I was catching them on the sexy shad. Tanner was catching them on the dirty white. I also caught one or two on the regular gold. I believe Tanner did as well when he had lost his. He lost his dirty white one at some point. So as long as it had the gold blade, that's what they wanted. These are a few options. This is in the Project Z, in that sexy shad. This is in the original. This is in the jackhammer, in the golden shiner. And then this is in the jackhammer again, in the dirty white. Just a couple options for you. Swim baits, most of these I just have a white swim bait on the back, a Guggen Saucy Swimmer, or a Reaction Innovation Skinny Dipper. They seem to work really good as chatterbait trailers. But, the big key was the grass. We were around grass and like I said, most of these fish came out of real specific pockets in the grass and ripping it through the grass. Every single bite came after ripping it out of the grass and giving it a good tug. That means they were reaction strikes. So these fish were reacting to the chatterbaits ripping through the grass. That's why they weren't really chasing stuff down and hitting it on a normal retrieve. Everything was after a rip through the grass. But that is pretty much all you guys need to know of what we did today, that day. And you can go out there in these same kind of conditions and catch some fish now. Hopefully you guys do. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. It helps push my videos along further with the YouTube algorithm. Also, by liking this video and by being subscribed to the channel, you get entered into my giveaway. As soon as we have 1,500 subscribers, we're going to be giving away five of my favorite lures. And to be entered into that, you gotta like this video, be subscribed to the channel, you can comment for an extra entry, and you can also share it on one of your social media pages for another entry as well. Definitely tag me in it, or if you don't tag me in it, then I won't know that you shared it and you won't get that extra entry. But, hope you guys enjoyed it. Tight lines, y'all. We will see you next Thursday. Yeah, I just wanna be great. Yeah, I just wanna be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I just wanna be great.